Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over an FFmpeg workflow to do some video editing. And I have some notes down here. Hopefully, they don't become too much of a distraction here. But what I have to start out with is I have three clips. I've got uh, clip one, clip two, clip three. And these are DV clips from an old DV cam. So they're kind of low resolution. I'm not doing this because I need to. I'm just doing it to make the video. So, you know, the quality of this won't be great, but... Um, the techniques will work with better quality videos. I have a terminal opened up and I've installed FFmpeg. If you don't have FFmpeg installed, I'll put a link in the description to my FFmpeg playlist. I'll also uh, put a link to my website where I'll put all the commands I'm using here so you don't have to type them right from the screen. You can look at my website. But uh, I'll do CD to desktop. And then I have these in this DV footage folder. And if I type FF probe clip one, and these are all the same quality, all these video files, um, we can look at this here. If we type FF Pro Clip 1, it'll give us some stats on this video. It'll tell the format. It says it's DV format. And it says the audio is PCM, 48,000 hertz. So, the, I mean, the audio on this is just huge. It's uncompressed. And the video is slightly compressed, but not very compressed. These files would be pretty big in size. Let's see, we have 4 gigabytes. This one's small. It's like 4.7 megabytes. There's almost nothing in that one. And then 1.77 gigabytes. The idea is that I'm going to combine all of these uh, files into one file, which is this one here, Final Without Audio. And you see it's 460 megabytes. It's much smaller. And I'm going to do some things in between. So we can also look here that this is 720 by 480. These screens can get a little messy to look at, but if you look up here, here's the stream right here. Um, you can see it's 720 by 480. If we open this, let's see, let's just display it. You'll see that is a four by three ratio and uh, 720 by 480 is not. But from what I understand, I think this uses like rectangular pixels. So when we convert it, we won't really have to deal with that. It figures it out automatically. Yeah, we look at the rate here is uh, uh, 28,492 kilobits, kilobytes per second. So a very high data rate and it's not very good quality. So next in my notes, what we're gonna do is we're going to deinterlace this. We can type FF play here and then clip one and it will play the clip. And you can see there were stripes on the in the video there. And when you're playing, you can just hit Q to exit out of it. And there is audio on this, but it's not coming through because the way the screen recorder works, it doesn't record the audio from the computer, but it's mostly just wind noise. Uh, to get rid of, to deinterlace this, we can, let me add dash I in here. So you can type FF play in the name of the file. I'm going to type dash I because later we're going to want dash I in there. It's kind of optional if you're just playing one file. And then we'll type dash VF, which is the uh, video filter. And we'll type space, quote, and then BW diff equals one. So this is a deinterlacer. There's a couple of deinterlacers. There's at least three that I can think of. Um, I'm not sure which one is the best quality. This is the one I decide to use. So if I run that, this will remove those lines there. Now, if we look at the quality of this, I don't know if I can get back up here. This video was originally 29.97 uh, FPS. This deinterlacer we're using here will actually double that. So it will be just under 60 FPS when it runs this. So next we're going to crop it. So we'll leave the deinterlacer in there. And then to add a second filter, we just put comma and then we type crop equals and then n underscore w and then colon n underscore w times 9 divided by 16. So if we run this, there we go, you'll see it cropped it to be 16 by 9 ratio. So you can add in, you know, you can just put a little uh, mathematical equation in here. Um, you don't actually have to like divide out 9 by 16 and multiply it. So it makes it a little easier to read. If we look at the video here, you'll see it cropped uh, in the middle. So it took a little off top, a little on the bottom. You know, I see the hood there. I don't really want to see the hood. I mean, it's not that important. I want to see the mountains um, because that's what this video is. It's a mountain drive. Then we have, so what we have here is we have the uh, width and then the height, and then we can do like an offset. We'll do uh, left parenthesis in underscore W minus out underscore W and then right parenthesis and then divide by two. So this is the default. So what this is doing is uh, centering the image left to right. But then uh, up and down, we want to do zero because we want it to start at the top of the frame and cut out the bottom. So if we run that, we'll see that. Unless you type something wrong, which uh, is pretty easy to do. Looks like I put an equal sign in here instead of a minus. So you'll see it cut out the top. Coming back to that error, 
I could write a whole command and do this whole edit. I'm using ffplay to demonstrate how when you're working through ffmpeg, you, you can use ffplay to see what your edits are before you encode the whole file. You know, I can do a little bit of a time, add on different filters, check it out, and then when I'm done, I'll run the whole ffmpeg and convert the files and um, build it. But ffplay is a very good tool for looking at uh, the edits you're making as you're making them. So next we want to scale this up to 720p. You know, we could in theory kind of leave it like this, because if you're going to play it on different systems, you can just play it at full screen. But, you know, for sake of argument, I want to scale this up to 720p. So we're at the correct aspect ratio now of uh, 16 by 9. So I can go in here and add on to the uh, filter. I can add scale equals 1280 colon 720. So that's 720p. What I, can, what I did there is I made it full screen for a second. Um, I record this at 720p, so you could see it at uh, full screen. Another option you can do, and I'll just uh, copy and paste this in, is you can pad it and scale it. That would leave it at the uh, four by three ratio, but it would put black bars in the sides. So I'll just show you a demonstration of that. So that's another option. I'm just gonna stick with the crop and scale. Next, what we wanna do is we have three files here. So we have the, uh, the algorithm for scaling and everything. Uh, we have three files. We want to conc concatenate these together. So what you do there is you put them in a file, the names of them in a file, and I have this files.txt, so I'll type cat files.txt and you add the files to uh, another file, you can name it whatever you want, and you type file space quote and then the name of the file. So if I type ls, you'll see I have clip one, two, three, and in this file I have clip one, two, and three. So then in our ffmpeg command, let's get back to it, um, I'm gonna jump to the beginning of this line. So I type control A, that'll jump to the beginning. So I can go here and edit this. I'll type a dash f space concat space dash safe, I'm not sure what safe does. Um, I looked it up, couldn't find it. So, but I found it somewhere said to use safe. So I'm using it. <laughs> um, safe is zero and then space and then dash I, instead of clip one dot move, we just type files dot txt. And then we hit enter there. Oh, I'm, I did that on the pad. Let me uh, back up. Well, I can just copy this line here. So if I wanted to, I could just let that run and it would play for, I think it's 20 some minutes is the length of all those files. So next we're gonna play around with converting this to an MP4 file. So I'll bring this back up. In order to do that, I'll jump to the beginning with Control A and I'll change this to FFmpeg and I'll type Control E to go back to the end. And then I'm going to type in, down here in my notes, you'll see this. I want to type space dash picks underscore FMT. And then I wanna type Y U, let me get this, uh, spelling correction off here <laughs> so you can see it. Okay, YUV 420P, and, and don't confuse that with 420P video. This is a um, pixel format. And you need this to run it on a Mac, to open this and view it on a Mac in QuickTime. You need that, so that's why I added that in there. Then I'll type dash SS space 00 colon 00 colon 0, .0 and then dash T10. So this is going to uh, make the file 10 seconds long. And then I'll type out.mp4, so we'll encode this. This, and I typed that pixel format wrong. Let me fix that. Okay, so now we're encoding it. And you can see the speed over here. It's encoding it at about 0.5 frames uh, per second. And this should be 600 uh, frames long. So if we go into uh, our file here, we can look at the output. And there we have it. So what you can do is you can use hardware encoding. So um, you may need to search for this if you're on like Windows or Ubuntu because there's different ways to do this, but it's something to look into. If you type in ffmpeg codex um, and then pipe grep 264, you'll see here it says H.264 and it lists these encoders here. And on different systems, you'll see different encoders. And um, the one that's the hardware encoder on a Mac is this H.264 underscore video toolbox. And there'll be a different one on Windows, a different one on Ubuntu that are hardware encoders. And like NVIDIA has one too. And sometimes these work and sometimes they don't. So if you're having trouble with it, you, know, you might just want to use the regular H.264 encoder. I'm gonna actually copy this line here and we'll see how much faster this is using the hardware encoder. 
Okay, you'll see now it's a 4x speed, so that was a lot faster. But now if we go and look at this file, it named it out.2. The quality is pretty terrible. What we can do is we can type ffprobe out.mp4. So this is the first one we did with the regular H.264 encoder. And I don't know if I mentioned it. Ffprobe, you know, is an, it tells you all the metadata on the file you're looking at. So if we look at this one here, we can look at the stream 00, which is video, and we'll look at the data rate, and it's uh, 5388 uh, kilobytes per second. If we do the same thing on the hardware encoded one, we'll see it's uh, 971 kilobytes bytes per second, so quite a bit lower. So if we're doing hardware encoding, if we add in that higher bit rate, copy this line here, I've added in uh, 5400K, which is similar to the other one. And if we run this, you'll see, it'll ask if I want to override, it'll say yes. And you'll see it's running at that 4X speed still. But if we go in here, the quality is a lot higher. No, that didn't work. Let me see what I do here. Oh, I, I changed it to out.mp4. So let's look at that one. So there we go. So the quality is a lot higher there. That's something to look into. Um, if you're using this a lot, you know, make notes as you're working through this. If you get the uh, hardware encoder working, you can make notes so you can refer back to them. You know, every time you use FFmpeg, you shouldn't have to relearn everything. So when you figure things out, make notes. I do that. I'm actually uh, try and share them on my website. I have a list. I'll put that down in the description of my FFmpeg notes. So this video is uh, you know around 20 some minutes long, and I want to speed it up. We'll go back to this here, and I'll go into my filter. Um, after we scale it, I'll put comma, and I'll type set PTS, and then I'll say equals one divided by seven times PTS. So this is a factor, so it's uh, one seventh. This changes the time um, of the video frames. So if you wanted to speed up your video 2x speed, you would do 0.5. And I want to make it seven times faster, so I did it one seventh. So if we run this, overwrite, so this is taking a little longer because I said make 10 seconds, but this is speeding up the video, so it has to go through more of the encoding. Let's see, I named that out, right? Yeah, so we'll look at this uh, out.mp4 now. And you see it's a lot faster. So if we do ffprobe out.mp4, we'll look at the video stream here. It still is at uh, 60 frames per second, and we still have this uh, same data rate, but we sped up, sped up the video. So, so now we will um, run this and actually convert it. So if I go up to my last statement, I can go in here and remove this time here. And then I would just hit enter here and it would um, output this whole thing to one file. And I've already done that because it would take a while to do that. And I ended up with this final without audio. So I can open that up. And if I scroll through, we'll see this is, um, you know, three minutes and 35 seconds long. One thing I also did here is I added this AN. Let me bring this up so it's a little bit bigger. I added AN here, and this uh, removed audio because it still had that wind noise in it. So I added AN, I took that out, and the rest I just ran on the whole file, and it took a while to run. So we have, you know, three minutes, 35 seconds. What you can do then is you can go to the audio library on YouTube, and if I click here, if I scroll down on the left here, it has other features, and you can see this audio library, and if you click on that, it'll take you over to the audio library, and you can go to duration here, and I can choose 3.30 to four minutes, and then I can look through here to find audio that fits the duration, and I don't try and get it exact all the time, but like Lullaby Baby is 3.33, that, that would have worked. Um, there's different ones. I chose this one called Rolling Hills, and if we go in here, we can type FF Probe Rolling Hills, and we can look, the duration here is three minutes and 33 seconds. So to add that on to our video, the video is done now. We don't want to re-encode the video. So we can type ffmpeg-i and then final without audio. And then we'll type dash i again and we'll type rollinghills.mp3. And then we'll type v codec and copy. So this will copy the video from one file to the other without re-encoding it. So we're not making a copy of a copy. And you could do this a million times and your video will retain its quality. Then we'll type space and then we'll type a codec and then we'll type AAC. And the reason here is that that, video, that audio is MP3 and we want AAC format. And I'll type space and I'll type dash B colon A and 128K. 
So that's the bit rate of the audio. And then I'll type dash map space zero colon V colon zero. And I'll explain this here in a sec. Then I'll type dash map space one colon A colon zero. So what this is doing is um, this first one is the input. So the first input is a final without audio. The second input is the audio. So this is zero map zero, the first input, map the video, the first video stream. And then the next one says take the second input, take the audio, the first audio stream. So this is gonna take the video from the first file, the audio from the second file, and it's going to uh, merge them together. So then I'll name that final with audio dot mp4. So this will actually do this very quickly because all it's doing is encoding that um, AAC file. So now we have final with audio and here it is and I have the music. So I'll add this on to the end of this video and um, also like I said before this is DV video so this is not great looking quality. Um, you know, if you're doing this with uh, high def video, you'll get better quality. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.